Hi, good day. My name is Nelson Peña from IMC International, partnering with Ducascopy Swiss Financial TV in Geneva. Today I would like to invite you to watch our program Let's Talk About Business and for this reason I have invited the CEO of Ascendia, Mr. Mark Ponte, who um, is representing the group of Ascendia, which is a joint venture between uh, the French uh, La Poste and this Swiss um, Post International. Hi Mark, welcome to the studio. How are you today? Fine, thank you Nelson. I would like to welcome you. You are representing uh, the new group Ascendia as the CEO, which is, as I told at the introduction, um, a new joint venture between the French Post and the Swiss Post International. Could you please um, tell about your group, what you're representing, the core business, uh, the joint venture with some key figures, please? Well, first of all, I think we are a, a new company because we had been created by La Poste and Swiss Post in July 2012. Mm. The idea was to regroup the uh, international cross-border business of uh, both postal entities. And today, as a Sandia, we are present on three continents, 15 countries. We cover 220 destinations for mail and parcels of our customers. We have uh, 1,000 and 100 employees mm. all around the world. These are the key figures. And our business is around 450 million euros. I see. When you're saying about the three continents, which continents are you operating today? Three continents. First is Europe. Europe it's, so. I would say, our core business. Yeah, yeah. But we're also in North America, mainly in USA, and in Asia with uh, two subsidiaries, one in Singapore and one in Hong Kong. When I was thinking about the French La Poste and uh, the Swiss Post, I think you have something in common. This is the yellow color. <laughs> what was the reason why two completely different groups came together from a strategic point of view? You're right to say that uh, we have this yellow color in common. Mm. And you will notice that in our logo, uh, our logo is yellow. Mm. Not exactly the same one as La Poste or Swiss Post, but yeah. it is yellow. And you will notice that if we are a Sendia, we have a baseline by La Poste and Swiss Post because we are very proud being part of these mm. two major postal groups. If we come back to the reasons of this joint venture, um, I think La Poste and Swiss Post had decided a long time ago to invest in international business, which is not the case of most of the postal operators, which are mainly domestic. Yeah. And the first investment had been done at the end of the 90s, so quite a long time ago. And I think La Poste and Swiss Post stand alone at a good presence in the market, where strong entities, maybe the number two and number three. But the first discussion started in 2009. And 2009, uh, it was a special context, you remember, this very strong uh, economic crisis. Yeah, and for the first time for the mail markets, um, substantial trend of decreases. Mm. So at this time, probably both operators thought that it could be a good opportunity to strengthen and position. And due to the maturity of the market, uh, both operators had the idea to strengthen the position without investing too much capex. You're, you're using the word strengthening. What were at that time the strength of both groups, which you thought from a strategic point of view, they were requested by your clients as an added value? Well, I think if La Poste and Swiss Post standalone were number two and number three, it meant that the product they provide to the customers were efficient mm. uh, for direct mail solution, for press solution, uh, both were starting to develop a range of products for small goods, which is uh, an increasing market. Yeah. So the market position was good. But once again, with this pressure of financial crisis, yeah. plus some bad trends, decrease of volumes, um, they thought that it would be better to have this alliance. And what is funny is both groups had the idea at the same time. 
and both group had the same way to think about it. They had a list of potential partners and quite naturally for so La Poste... You were kind of attracted by the perfect lovers at the same yeah. time. Well, <laughs> I think it was quite natural for La Poste to say that the best partner could be Swiss Post. And I think our colleagues from Swiss Post made, made the same analysis. And one of the reasons is we, are, we, we, are, we were, in this, at this time, very strongly complementary. Because La Poste has invested quite a lot in three markets, the three biggest in the world, USA, UK and Germany while Swiss Post has developed a much broader presence in 15 countries. Yeah. And it means that we had no redundancy and the alliance was really quite easy to, to implement. Yeah. When I was thinking about the French Post, and I told you this uh, lately, I, I always have this very funny movie, Les Ch'tis. Okay, which, which came very positively, might be not in France, but here absolutely. And I can imagine that you are coming from Paris, taking a new culture, and Paris is the center of the world for a French person, might be, and now you are here somehow, sometime in Switzerland. Did you feel the same, that you <laughs> were just expected from Paris to come to Switzerland, apart from a cultural point of view, that there was a kind of cultural shock? Or what were the challenge for you to take this, this role? Well, it, it's true that uh, Ascendia is very far from uh, this traditional image yeah. you can have uh, in the movie you mentioned, uh, Bienvenue chez les Ch'tis. Yeah, yeah. It's really different and uh, <laughs> probably that in France uh, not so many people can imagine that uh, La Poste has developed with his partner Swiss Post a presence yeah. all around the world. And, uh, but you're right to say that uh, one of the first challenge when you create a, a joint venture um, it's a partnership between equal partners. So it's a 50-50 joint venture? It's a 50-50 joint venture. And this works? And it works. Yeah. And you're right to say that it's not obvious mm. because we all know that most of the joint venture are not really uh, successful. It's very difficult. So after two years, we can say that it works. Yeah. And, it, it, and how can we measure it? First of all, I think uh, we kept the customers on board and that was the challenge number one, mainly in the markets where La Poste and Swiss Post in the past were competing. We have been able immediately to have uh, this alliance and to manage properly the relationship with customers. So the customer are still there. Um, number two, the teams are still on board and that's very important because when you have this kind of joint venture, um, you need to create a strong level of cooperation between different culture. And okay, in Ascendia, we are present in 15 different countries, but when we merged some entities in USA, we were talking about American people working together. But when we are talking about head office, it means that at the moment we have around 90 people in head office, it's 50-50. We have people in Paris, we have people in Bern, mm. in all the teams, and these people have to work together. And of course, at the very Were beginning... Would you create a, a kind of, of new Ascender culture, or there's a kind of mix between Swiss Post and, uh, and, 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 and the La Poste French? Well, the main risk you have is to take what is not the best part of mm. both culture. Mm. And of course, the main opportunity is to, to try to have the best from French and Swiss, La Poste and Swiss Post. Yeah, yeah. And what we have tried is really to create an Ascendia way of uh, working together, implementing some values. We have decided to have some values between us and with our customers. The three main values are ease of use, trust and friendly. And we try to apply it. But of course, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge and it's not something that you can just decide like, yeah. like that. It has to build up. Huh? It takes time mm. and it is really the kind of change management which require not three months or six months, but one year, two years. And 
now we are after two years, we can really say that it works. Of when course, it was more difficult to convince clients to stay or to bring new clients in or to convince the colleagues on the French side, French post side or Swiss post to stay. So what was for you as a uh, CEO, as a leader, the main difficult? On which well, side? The first priority was really the customers. Mm. Because when you create a joint venture, your main risk is to have customer losses. So really the first priority is we need to maintain the customer portfolio. We need to be very well organized in sales in order to keep a high level of confidence to prove that at least we are maintaining the same level of services mm -hmm. and sometimes we can even improve it. That was the first priority. Mm -hmm. And in parallel, we had to work internally between these French and Swiss people and there was not the same level of urgency because we know when you are talking about this cultural aspect, you need to have time. So to create this trust, I mentioned this friendliness, it takes months. And of course, you, you need to explain the project, the new way of working. We had uh, intercultural seminars. Mm -hmm. And what is very important for us is after two years, you have more than 90% of the people who are saying, well, I'm pleased to work with new colleagues. And for us, it's really a big success. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the business itself. I think you are in an amazing, dynamic, and challenging and changing environment uh, through the new technology. The mail volume, I can imagine, has changed. Um, I think also the globalization to be in certain emerging countries uh, has changed. I can imagine that Asia has become very important for, for your business. Um, from a professional industrial point of view, what is the trend in the shipping mail solutions you are working on and uh, where do you see the trend and how Ascendia, you as the CEO, how you are facing with your team this change? Well, you know that um, postal industry, as many others, is facing a huge challenge. And the global trend of the industry is, well, in the future, you probably will have less mail than we had in the past and probably more good exchanges due to the e-commerce growth. And for Ascendia, in the cross-border mail market, well, it's, the market size is around, let's say, 7 billion euros. That's the worldwide market size. And, well, if you observe the market, the global trend is decrease of volumes. But if you go into details, uh, you remark immediately that while you have a global decrease, you have some segments of market which have a good potential. And these segments are, well, let's say direct mail, catalogs, small goods, etc. And when we are a Sendia, of course, we are present in France and in Switzerland. Mm. And in these countries, we are working with all kinds of customers from individuals to key account. We have universal service obligation. But when we are a Sendia abroad in the 15 countries I mentioned, we just need to be focused on the segments where we estimate that we can have a good potential of growth. And our strategy when we are abroad of France and Switzerland is really to be focused on, um, on these segments. So at the moment, um, on the small goods market, on the direct mail market, we have a potential of growth of 5 to 10 percent per year. And uh, our ambition is really, as one of the major players in the market, uh, to take opportunities and to develop our business. Um, and that's what we are doing from two years. Yeah. Um, from a regional point of view over the next four or five years, where is your focus? Is still Europe or United States, South America, Asia? Where are you going to focus? I mentioned that um, we, we are present on three continents, Europe, North America and Asia. And our intention is really 
to remain focused mm -hmm. on the countries where we are. are. Yeah, because uh, these 15 countries represent 90% of the whole market. Yeah. Yeah. And so for us, investing in new countries will maybe possible later on, but yeah. at this stage it's yeah. preferable yeah. to focus on the 15. And of course, um, Europe is quite natural when you are a French Swiss uh, company, but it's true that uh, US market has a huge potential and Asian market is developing very, very fast. And that's maybe uh, a new trend because usually when we were talking about Asia, most of the volumes were intra-regional and what we observe at the moment is we have more and more volumes from Asia to Europe and USA. So it's coming back. Okay. Yeah, and it is r related to the development of e-commerce because, let's say, in China, in Hong Kong, um, they produce a lot of these kind of small items yeah. you can order yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on websites. And for us, with the focus we want to have on these small goods. When I'm talking about small goods, I'm talking about less than two kilograms and, and very often less than one. Yeah. Um, I think for us it's very important to, to be present in, um, in Asia. Yeah. Asia will remain the third region for us, but if you are thinking not about region but about countries, we can really hope that uh, Hong Kong and and Singapore can be in the top five countries of our group. So the, the, these two, two regions are going to be your regional hubs because we have India, we have uh, might be the region around Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, we have China obviously which is a, a big question mark I can imagine to get in. Um, what do you see within Asia uh, I would say the, the most largest potential for yourself? We have to take into consideration um, postal international rules and um, even if the market, the cross-border mail market is uh, liberalized, uh, you have very specific rules and in particular very specific rules in terms of remuneration between postal operators. And this is a key element. It's a bit technical but it's a key element we have to take in, into consideration and at this stage uh, we consider that our main focus is really to be it's Hong Kong, China, Singapore. Uh, we have partner in India mm. and at this stage we will focus our action here. I see. So, imagine in two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen years we are still going to send letters as our parents did and might be we both fifteen, twenty years ago. Do you think the letters are still a main mail is still a main business from you or it will completely change? Just as a final statement. I, don't, I, I can't imagine at the moment uh, a world without any mail. I can't imagine a world with less mail than in the past, yeah. but I think that uh, mail is a very efficient media. Mm. And it really has to be taken into consideration because if you consider that mail is a media, uh, be, uh, and uh, competing in a way mm. with uh, other such as uh, TV, internet, yeah. radio, etc., yeah. etc. Et um, I think there is still room for mail because of its efficiency. Because when you are talking about memorization rate, um, I think mail has very, very good figures, very good. Uh, impact mm. and I really think it will remain and it, it, it's always the case with young people and it's funny to know that the biggest customer of Ascendia for direct mail is one of the giant of internet. Mm. A customer that you, you would never imagine as using direct mail for promoting his business but it is yeah. our first customer. And why is it our first customers? Because they have remarked that for gaining new customers they need to use a mix of media and if they have a mixed media without any mail it's 
much less efficient than if you use mail. Are you using these clients in aspects of direct marketing as a science or just taking over the solution of the transport? So you are bringing your added value, your knowledge how to build up direct mail campaign. How do you work on this? It, uh, well, it depends. Uh, for some customers, we can say that we are just uh, a logistic Probably. network. Yeah, yeah. But for some others, we try to, to provide more value added. Mm. We try to provide some address cleaning. And we really try to convince them to show them uh, of, of the efficiency of mail. So if I come back to your former question, which is how can you imagine Ascendia in 10, 15, 5, 10, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, I really think that mail, when I say mail, I'm talking about documents, uh, will remain part of our core business. But I can also imagine that goods will have a bigger part in the future. And maybe, I don't know, in three years, five years, seven years, maybe uh, the revenue of Ascendia will be generated 50 50 by mail and goods. Good, Mark. I would like to thank you. It has been very insightful. I have learned My something pleasure. about your company and I wish you for your challenge that you have as a CEO. All the best and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nelson. This was Let's Talk About Business uh, from IMC International, partnering with Yucoscopy TV, where I presented the CEO of Ascendia, Mr. Mark Puente. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next. Bye-bye.